Good night to all the, the participants. I would like to welcome you all to this Ocean Decade Laboratory, which will examine how better data can help to a better predicted ocean. In particular, we will discuss the IHO S100 framework and all embracing data model. The program for today uh, is as follows. Um, conduct a, a brief uh, interview, a brief overview of the IHO um, by myself. And uh, then that will be followed by introduction to the universal data model by uh, Dr. Matthias Jonas, the IHO Secretary General. Uh, then we'll follow this with a video on the S100 concept and its applications. Uh, this will be followed by a presentation on the world of S100 products by Ms. Julia Powell, the Chief Navigation Services Division of NOAA. The final presentation of uh, this uh, whole session will be the S100 Geospatial Information Registry by Mr. Yong Beck, uh, which uh, serves as IHO Assistant Director. We will have in time for questions. Uh, can I request that uh, you please use the chat function to pose your questions and we will try to answer all within the time allocated for the session. When I looked at the list of registrations, I saw some familiar names. So uh, for, for those, this is, is fairly uh, old news, but uh, in, in case some of the others do not really know that much about the IHO. I think uh, I've taken a couple of very, uh, couple of slides just to explain uh, the role of the IHO. In essence, the IHO is an intergovernmental consultative and a technical organization that was established in 1921. So you can deduct from this that uh, we have had our centenary celebrations uh, on the 21st of June this year. The, the reason why the IHO was established was in support of safety of navigation and in the protection of the marine environment. And the images you see there were taken on uh, the, uh, at the centenary celebrations that we had here in, in Monaco. The mission of the IHO is to facilitate the provision of adequate and timely hydrographic information for worldwide marine navigation and other purposes. And the other purposes is, is what we're going to explain today in this laboratory where we believe uh, that we, as the IHO, can contribute uh, to a better predicted ocean. And we achieve our mission through the coordination of the endeavors of all the national hydrographic officers. Currently, the IHO member states are 95. Uh, we recently had a member joining from Africa, Kenya. Um, we still, compared to the, the, the IMO, we still have some way to go and it's, it's, uh, we constantly engage with coastal states within our regional uh, uh, hydrographic uh, commissions uh, to encourage them to participate in the work of the IHO and also to become IHO member states. So now we're going to have the introduction of the universal data model by the IHO Secretary General, Dr. Matthias Jonas. Dear participants, thank you for joining us today as part of the IHO's contribution to the Ocean Decade Laboratory, a predicted ocean. As you may have guessed, this has to do with the digital representation of the ocean. I will explain why such a representation is so relevant for a predicted ocean and how IHO can assist. And I will explain it in an unconventional approach using the Lego brick analogy. So, stay tuned. The general definition of prediction is the smart extrapolation of the present status, the forecasting. 
Smart extrapolation is based on smart modeling of the status generated with now casting. So the better the now casting, the potentially better the forecasting. But how to get a better now casting of the oceans? Measurements of ocean characteristic have been systematically undertaken for decades. But the various data available are often fragmented of different quality related to different reference models of different density and stored in different incompatible formats. This is the case for every ocean discipline, including, for example, the data sets. Therefore, when you consider the wide variety of ocean information, such as physical, chemical, and biological data, to name only a few, you easily understand the difficulties to combine data to create a comprehensive, a holistic image, a qualified digital representation of the ocean. But this is exactly how the IHO's S100 framework can help. Our universal hydrographic data model addresses two challenges linked to the diversity of data sets, compatibility and interoperability. Compatible software applications use the same data formats. For example, if GIS applications are compatible, the user can open data sets on any product. Today, everybody who works with GeoData knows and understands this. Interoperability is the next level of compatibility. Technically speaking, interoperability involves building coherent services for users when the individual components are technically different and, moreover, managed by different organizations. This is only one of the existing definitions of interoperability, but can be intuitively understood if you imagine how a smartphone works. Apps of great variety delivered by many different providers collaborate seamlessly under the same overarching paradigm of iOS or Android. The magic key to achieve this is the use of a coherent semantic data modeling. For geodata, the groundwork for was already done thanks to the ISO 19100 series of standards for geoinformation. This standards family is very generic and waits for practical application in the field. HO became the first and biggest testbed for the application on its native marine data standards and can be regarded as an ISO 19100 test laboratory. In other words, S100 is simply a global marine test field for. The idea to set up S100 was born back in 2005, and since then, S100 has built up its own ecosystem. But before it will be explained later in the session why it is so beneficial for all marine data users, I would like to present a simple but not simplistic analogy to help understanding. Lego bricks. The bricks are compatible through the regular raster of knobs and holes, but they are also interoperable since you can create a house, a castle, or a tent, or another fully fantastic building, which basically the same bricks. I grew up in the 70s, and since then, many new LEGO elements have joined the catalog of produced bricks. But however different they are, they all still follow the same paradigm of compatibility and interoperability. Back to S100, catalogs are very relevant elements of the framework. The internet-based S100 public catalogs list existing features specific for their domain and related attributes, like colors for Lego bricks. Each feature exists only once and can be reused under other domains if it meets the desired purpose. If you recall the content of the purchased Lego boxes, they consist of two parts, the bricks itself packed in a blister and building instructions how to assemble a house, a boat, or a helicopter. Some parts are common, some are specific. The house does not need helicopter wings and the helicopter does not need the steering gear. The analogy for the LEGO building instructions included in the box are the S100 data product descriptions, which exactly describe 
how a buffermetric data set must be composed based on the S100 attribute features. I remember how my kids played with Lego. After brutally opening the box and removing the wrapping, they only assembled the content once according to the instructions. Having done this, they took it into pieces, then started to assemble individual creations. IHO's S100 feature attribute and product description factory is stored in the IHO Geospatial Information Registry, which is specifically designed for this very purpose. One can select a suitable product description for encode data sets and set up data services, or we can use existing features and attributes to create a fully new data product description. If new specific features or attributes are required, we can be designed and registered within the registry. Needless to say that all these manipulations can be done by educated users using a clever web-based front-end. But whatever data the newly created data product can incorporate in the future, the resulting data set will be compatible and interoperable with any other S100 based data set. In doing so, the entirety of S100 data sets can form the digital cross domain representation of the ocean. This will enable services to support better now casting, making better forecasting of a predicted ocean. That's it for the introduction. Now, Keep being with us and watch the video which explains the exciting options to combine S100 conformant interoperable datasets. One hundred years ago, when the IHO was created, its mission was to help make navigation safer. It promoted uniformity in the thousands of paper charts covering navigable waters across the globe. In the 1980s, the IHO developed a worldwide standard, the INT chart series. This ensured that when mariners navigated around the world, they could easily switch from a chart from one national hydrographic office to the next and understand the colors, symbols, and texts which were standardized. In the 1990s, this concept was extended to digital maps. National hydrographic offices, in collaboration with the shipping industry and technical suppliers, managed this evolution under the coordination of the IHO. In the 2000s, nautical charts and related information, such as radar and automatic identification systems, became digitally integrated and were used by all vessels on international voyages. But the IHO did not stop there. In order for marine data gathered from around the world to be used by all ocean stakeholders, the IHO is helping to increase their digital uniformity with the S100 Universal Data Model. This framework provides standards and formats for data from a variety of disciplines. This means data can easily be shared among ocean branches, marine traffic and harbour operations, coastal development and ocean sciences. It can also be meshed and displayed together, providing a complete picture of what is at sea. The S100 framework has the potential to bridge hydrography and oceanography in order to build a fully digital marine data ecosystem, the digital twin of the ocean. Hydrographic technology is becoming smarter. With up-to-date data, ships can calculate the fastest, safest or most efficient route for a voyage. 
These technological advances will also pave the way for autonomous shipping. The ocean is crucial for the livelihoods of millions of people around the world. Marine data can be used by coastal states to make informed decisions and can contribute to the sustainable use of the seas. With the development of hydrographic technology, the use of marine data is increasing. We are expanding from what does the seafloor look like to what is in the water, a concept we could call spatial hydrography. From nautical charts to all ocean data, the IHO's voyage continues. Now we have uh, enough background on uh, the concept and how it's applicable. And I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Julia Pal, who, by the way, is also the chair of the S100 Working Group uh, to provide us a presentation uh, more on the, uh, the S100 products. Thank you, Julia. Hi, thank you, Aubrey. Um, yeah, so my presentation is going to talk about what my um, home agency, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is doing in the world of S100 to provide um, products. Um, our target focus is for the navigation community, but as um, stated by Secretary General Matias Jonas, all of these products can be used, um, you know, the intended is multi-use um, for these different products. Um, so next slide, please. Yeah, so, so the big thing, what we um, are doing for our umbrella services for S100 is we've put it under our Precision Marine Navigation Program. And when we started off with this program, we really needed to come up with a definition of what, what Precision Marine Navigation is. And it's the ability of a vessel to safely and efficiently navigate within the US EEZ and operate in close proximity to the seafloor bridges, narrow channels, and other marine hazards. Um, the program started off with a port focus, but as we started building this out, we realized that um, the inherent um, data that we had within NOAA um, extended way beyond ports, and it really provides value to the entire oceanographic community. And so we really built it out um, throughout our whole US EEZ versus just focusing on port data. Um, next slide, please. So the main, the main driver um, for precision marine navigation, um, it is, yes, navigation. Um, and we really recognize that in and around ports and narrow channels, it's becoming increasingly difficult as the maritime um, economy continues to grow. Um, well, when we look at the economic data, it shows that the total marine economy is growing faster than the US economy as a whole. And it really, and it contributes 373 billion to our gross domestic products and supports about 2.3 million jobs. Um, and then also globally, today's marine economy is valued at approximately 2 trillion and is an annually projected to grow to about 3 trillion by 2030. Um, the economic growth has resulted and coincided with the growth in ship size. And we all see that, you know, ships um, get bigger and bigger. Um, you know, we have to really think about our port infrastructures and how we transit through. So um, we have to note that water is still the leading transportation mode for international freight, um, and then especially transported to and from the United States and elsewhere around the world. Um, and then the other thing, you know, in June 2021, we have um, economic data for the Port of Los Angeles, which processed a record 10 million uh, TEUs for the new Western Hemisphere record. But larger ships really mean less room to operate, so we're closer to seafloor bridges and channels. Um, but really, you know, to continue safe and efficient operations, mariners have to rely on an increasing amount of information and data tools throughout their voyages. Next slide, please. So when we, we go, you know, when, when somebody, it, either being a navigator or even someone looking for oceanographic data, um, you know, NOAA develops and disseminates several types of navigation data products and services. Um, you know, for example, we have our entire suite of electronic navigational charts. If you go next, um, we have a full, full host of water level and surface current information. But NOAA is also very unique in, in terms of not just being an oceanographic agency. If you go next, um, we're also the atmospheric agency and we have a whole host of weather products. 
And currently um, within NOAA, none of these, other than the ENCs, none of these navigation products and data sets can be leveraged in an integrated fashion within navigation systems or even outside of navigation systems unless you do a whole lot of programmatic work. Um, this is one of the big problems that we're really trying to solve via our Precision Marine Navigation Program. Um, next slide, please. Um, so, so as I said before, we have a whole lot of data, but you know, when we really look at it across even our own agency, um, it's actually difficult to access and process this navigation data. You know, one due to either multiple devices and systems required to access the data, it's spread across many different websites or different um, cloud accounts, um, and data sets are also, as noted before, encoded in different formats um, that are not particular tuned for navigation um, or any other types of applicability. You know, and that's one of the reasons why we're really trying to leverage S100 to to move it forward um, as we go. Um, but the other big thing with these data sets is um, they're not machine to machine readable. So usually there needs to be an operator action to get that data and to be able to download it and then process it. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, a lot of these data sets, for example, our surface current data sets, they come out every six hours. And so it really is more helpful if you have a machine to machine mechanism to be able to um, scroll, download it, process it, ingest it into your your navigation systems and or other systems. Next slide, please. So, so what we're trying to do within our precision marine navigation program, as I stated before, is we're leveraging the international standards of S100 from the IHO. Um, NOAA and the US has been an active player within the development of S100, um, but what we're really trying to do is develop um, data and dissemination services that leverages all of S100. So we've really looked to S100 on how we can package up the different products such as surface currents and bathymetry um, and ENCs and water levels. We've really implemented our machine to machine capability. And if you go next, you know the other big um, problem that we've got um, is that we don't have a common website. So I, I can announce that sometime next week, we're going to be launching our marinenavigation.noaa.gov website which is sort of a clearinghouse um, of navigation related information, but it also has our data gateway viewer where you can also access and access any of our S100 based data products that we have started developing. Um, so currently we've only got um, the surface currents available because it's a bit, you know, we still have development resources and as the IHO standards mature, we plan to um, continue to mature our data products and capabilities. Next slide, please. You know, so I think when we look at what we're intending to do within the S100 framework for our data products and services, um, these these data products are the ones that we'll be focusing on initially. Um, so we'll do we'll focus in on the S101 electronic navigational chart, S102, which is the bathymetric surface, um, S104, which is water level information for surface navigation, S111, which is surface currents. And then because we also have weather within our agency, we'll be focusing on the S41X series of product specifications, which includes weather and wave hazards, um, ice information, and others. And all of these will be in the standardized S100 encoding mechanisms, and they will be freely available through our data gateway viewer as we continue to develop and launch these data products. Next slide, please. So this slide is really just talking about where we're looking at our notional rollout um, for our S100 products and services. Um, the big red line is, is really where S100 edition five is, is to be um, tentatively scheduled to be approved by the IHO and IHO member states. Um, and that's really the linchpin on going operational with a lot of these products and services. Um, so you know it's really just a snapshot of, of our development process and how we plan to in the next five years um, to really have a full-fledged suite of S100 products and services out there for the navigation community. But, you know, as noted before, it also can be used for wider oceanographic applications. Next slide, please. So, so really, you know, in terms of, you know, people ask sort of why, why do you want to do this? And um, we look at this as a, you know, I have a little bit of a story time example, 
but you know if we think about how you know cargo and things transit you know from place to place a lot of it isn't you know over land it's by sea because it's more efficient um but it also has you know some environmental considerations um to take into account so if we think about you know our scenario is that when we take a ship transit from new orleans to new, new york new jersey we have some navigation um, considerations we have to think about depths and bathymetry and channels. We have to think about the surface current systems, water levels, waves and severe weather hazards, and traffic and congestion. Um, so, so we really want to think about, for example, in New Orleans, the depths and bathymetry and channels is really important um, because the, the channel characteristics, characteristics can change frequently due to output from the Mississippi River. Um, I will note, you know, two weeks ago, Hurricane Ida came through that region. And you know, it took a couple of days for the Mississippi River to reopen up fully because they had to do a lot of new surveys and get that data out and processed and ensure that there were no new obstructions from that. Um, you know, and then the things like surface current systems, you know, tidal currents near the ports and major surface currents along the route can affect the speed and efficiency of the ship. And then water levels in both ports, you know, ships really need to ensure that the water is deep enough to allow for their draft as water levels can change with the tides and weather. And then in addition, waves and severe weather, you know, the ship really needs to be aware and consider weather conditions and systems and potential severe weather, um, you know, in order to effectively plan their route safely. Um, so next slide, please. So when we look at, you know, from a navigation point of view, but, you know, almost any kind of view, you, you know, we look at pre-voyage, you know, we have to plan our route. Um, and so before the data, the voyage begins, you know, mariners and others can consult our surface current forecast, which is our S111 data, which is the data set that we have in a proto operational um, viewer. Um, and this is a snapshot from our data gateway, um, but it helps in, you know, for route optimization. So if you do next, you know, from this, you can clearly see that the Gulf Stream is depicted. And we actually launch this data every six hours. Um, so, 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 you know, every six hours, you know, if you have machine to machine capabilities, you can refresh that data. Um, but for example, you know, here ships can take advantage of that major Gulf Stream um, surface current and they can cut down on their fuel use um, and ships then can ride the currents and operate at a less maximum speed, which thereby cuts down on their fuel consumption and reduce the emissions that they produce. But it's also um, been shown to be more cost effective for large container ships. For example, one knot of speed reduction can result in um, 10 to 15 percent of fuel saving. Next slide, please. But the other key thing is, you know, when we do these, when I talk about our surface current forecast, we are running them every six hours and we um, have leveraged our operational forecast systems, which um, are mainly used, you know, they're, they're very large data sets that contain a whole lot of information, such as sea surface temperature and water levels. And what we've done is we've peeled out the onion of, of the S111, you know, piece, which is the surface current and put it into its own data set, you know, because we were looking at also file sizes. So our file sizes for the surface currents are about less than one megabyte. So it makes it easier for machine to machine dissemination. But the big thing with this is because we have these surface currents now that are packaged up, they are for every six hours, but it contains a forecast um, of up to 72 hours. So if you look at your route planning, you can say, here's my forecast in New Orleans where I'm leaving, but I also can see what the surface currents are potentially going to do 72 hours later when my ship may be expected into port. So that actually also helps enable route optimization so you can better plan your voyage. Next slide, please. And then the other big thing, as I talked about, is having to know water levels. Um, you know, so the, the big thing is, is S100 standards for water level data will make it clear where it's safe and not safe for a ship to man maneuver. Um, typical water level data is displayed in time series plots, um, such as the image on the left. Um, that's actually not very useful. Um, when you're trying to look at it in a geographic or a graphical representation um, layered on into different types of data. And so this goes back to how um, Dr. Jonas talked about how S100 is interoperable. So you can actually take your surface, your water level information. And if you have a, 
high resolution bathymetry, you can adjust your, your water levels and you can determine where you have go, no go areas based on that water level information. But it also takes into account ship's characters, characteristics um, in order to you know, determine if it's safe for that vessel or not. Um, next slide, please. And then the other big thing is when we're talking about you know, S100 data is also having accurate bathymetric data, which is critical for safe navigation in narrow channels and shallow port areas, but it's also you know, useful for non-navigation instances for seafloor characterization and, and other things. And so our intent um, for NOAA navigation products and services, why we will, why we will um, focus in on ports for our bathymetric data, we will have the capabilities to produce out S102 data um, for the rest of the US EEZ where we have um, data available. So it's not like we're just focusing in on a narrow, narrow port area. You know, we're, we're looking at this in a holistic manner. So where we have data available, We'll, we'll release it, you know, such that, that, you know, it meets our quality and safety standards. Um, you know, so next slide, please. You know, but the big thing, you know, why S102 bathymetric information is important is that it helps improve the safety of operations and then allows for deeper draft vessels to navigate in shallow areas. Um, the grid bathymetry can be described as the navigation surface or a digital terrain model of the seafloor in the form of rect regular rectangular meshes, um, but S102 will provide much higher resolution than traditional charts, and the display will note where it's safe for a ship to navigate based on its draft. Um, and one of our first success stories um, for this was a pilot project that we did in the port of LA Long Beach where S102 data made it possible for them to increase their draft by four feet. Next slide, please. And then the other big thing, you know, we want to think about is, you know, at sea is the waves and weather. So once you're outside the channels and near shore areas, parameters like weather, water levels and bathymetry are no longer the primary concerns for mariners, um, but they can continue to use our um, precision marine navigation services to monitor wave and weather conditions, because eventually we'll be producing um, the S41X data streams that are um, coming from our weather service and we'll be disseminating that. And that's also either every 12 hours and sometimes every six hours. So for example, you know, we'll have information regarding wave and weather hazards, conditions and real-time observations. And then also S41X will provide new ways to display this information and we'll make it clear what potential weather concerns can affect a voyage. So next slide, please. Yeah, so if you look at this, you know, you have, you can see, um, based on our data, you know, this is a sampling of it, you know, example product of how S41X um, will look, but um, the center shows, you know, is severe weather, and you can see by the AIS tracks around it, all the ships have taken that information, and they're navigating around the severe weather. Um, you know, so, so the information helps aid decision-making process and ensure, ensure safety while at sea. Um, so, for example, you know, we had a, a big tragedy a few years ago for the El Faro, which was transiting from Jacksonville to Puerto Rico, and it encountered Hurricane Joaquin and was sunk. And then when it first departed, Joaquin was just a tropical storm and then only developed into a hurricane while there at sea. And one of the findings was that if the, if the, if the ship had the ability to have that weather information integrated into their chart system, you know, they would be able to better see spatially where they should be avoiding um, weather versus, you know, steering clear into it. Um, next slide, please. You know, and then now as we're transiting, you know, up and we're arriving at our destination, which is the port of New York and New Jersey, um, you know, we're going into another crowded port, but it's really important at this point for the mariner to, to get the latest information available as they enter. Because as we leverage our international standards, such as S100, we utilize a robust discovery metadata that allows for navigation systems to automatically discover and download the latest data sets available for their voyages. Um, so as they transit into New York, they can get that latest available water level and surface current information and then make informed decision as they navigate one of the busiest ports in the world. So it's not just about getting the data when they leave, it's also about continuously updating that data 
And it's all in, you know, packets of information that's been standardized and integrated and it's interoperable with each other and has that machine to machine data discovery that allows for, you know, um, scripted crawls to come in and say, hey, I just need this small bit of data for when I transit. Um, next slide, please. So when we look at the benefits of this program, you know, we really are striving to make marine navigation data more accessible um, that can enhance the decision making process, which leads to increased efficiency. You know, so we really are looking to help optimize routes for fuel savings, but also reduce CO2 emissions, um, reduce lightering offshore, which can be a safety issue and in reducing port wait times. But we also look at it as to improve safety. So we can hope to reduce um, collisions, elisions, and groundings, and helping to avoid um, hazardous weather conditions. Next slide, please. So when I talk about you know, how this program got started, it was based on um, you know, our, our pilot that we did in Long Beach, um, LA Long Beach, um, and how S102 data allowed for a draft increase of four feet, um, which translates into millions of dollars of cost savings. So in LA, um, it's it's dredged to 76 feet to allow for tankers within a, a with a 69 foot draft. Um, however, they have um, wave conditions, what called long period swells, which actually gave a draft limitation to 65 feet, um, which forced offshore lightering. Um, NOAA produced a bunch of new surveys in that area but we also produced it out as S102 high resolution bathymetry and it allowed the pilot association to increase that draft back up to 69 feet, which resulted in millions of dollars of savings and also um, allowing for less environmental impact of um, offshore lightering, um, which is where you have to offload cargo, um, in this case, oil um, from one vessel to another vessel in order to um, make the ship's draft less. Next slide, please. So really in summary, um, what we're looking for in our, our milestones that we've done so far is that we've implemented the full S100 discovery metadata for machine to machine data and dissemination. Um, this is currently for S111 surface currents. And as S100 evolves to edition five, we'll be doing the upgrade to edition five metadata um, and also product specifications. We've re released our prototype precision marine navigation data processing and dissemination system. We released a beta version of our data gateway viewer, which is running on um, Amazon Web Services, and that provides a, a human way of seeing what data we have, but all of that data is also sitting on the cloud with all the metadata. Um, and then, as I said, next week, we're hoping to launch our marinenavigation.noaa.gov website. And then the big thing is we do continued stakeholder outreach and engagement. Um, next slide. And I would like to say thank you for the opportunity to talk about what NOAA is doing for its S100 products and services. You know, while it is, you know, primarily focused on navigation, we also believe that this data um, has a multi-use function and can be used um, across the different um, oceanographic domains. So back over to you, Aubrey. Thank you, Julia. Uh, you for this uh, feedback on the work of, of NOAA and the real life examples uh, of the use of S100 products. You also make a very good case for data compatibility and the S100 uh, system and framework can make this possible. Now the, portable, uh, the, the portal to this S100 world is through the IHO Geospatial Information Registry and uh, Mr. Young Beck will now provide uh, us with a presentation on the IHO registry. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining us for the S100 uh, ecosystem and the presentation and everything. So previous presenter, presenter and video introduced the concept and application cases of S100. So from now on, I will present more technical detail about how the features and attributes in the ocean can be digitized and utilized in S100 ecosystem. Next, please. 
The greatest advantage of modern geo-information software application is the ability to combine combine your data from various themes and domains. A popular example known to the everyone is Google Map. Not only does it show the position and directions, but also links to restaurants and services, present satellite imageries, and provide real-time time traffic information. Yes, please. To do so, the underlying data model for incoming data must be consistent to the seamlessly, seamlessly integrate data from multitude of sources. At the same time, this data, this data model needed, needed to be extendable for new sort of digital information. The IHO GI registry concept complies with this paradigm for the marine time domain. But in the contrast to the globe Google commercial approach, the registry is open source and it depends on the engagement of subject specific domain who wish it to be included. In our world, it is the IHO geospatial information registry which forms the foundation for such approach. Next, please. IHO GI registry is an easily expandable of named and attribute, attributed features to describe real world and, uh, and administrative entities. In order to keep it manageable, the GI registry contains several registers, such as the concept register, which defines terms and definitions, data dictionary register, store a structure and relationship of features and attributes, and portrayal register, store the symbol, colors, and font, etc. And some of which are subdivided into the specific uh, domain and to host by, by, uh, by the relative the features. Next, please. So now I will give an example how the information is registered and the use in the registry. So the item maintained in the register, registers are abstract description, having their characteristics subscribed through the associated attributes and portrayal specification. These attributed features are the, are the equivalent of Lego bricks, which already mentioned about the Secretary General, Matthias, which may be used in the catalog to, be, to specify the features in the product. A typical feature from the hydrographic domain is a rack. How this rack from the real world can be digitized and visualized in the system. Next, please. So in order to utilize the rack features in the application, those are the steps to be taken. The first, so we need to, to register the definition of the term rec in the, in the concept registry. And the next step is to, to tie the sub attributes and relationship with other features are defined in the defined to indicate the, the characteristics of recs in the data dictionary. Up to this stage, the data driven design to build the product is complete. The equivalent of a bricks is Lego. In order to visualize the lag, the symbols and colors are registered in the portrayal register. So by using the structure and symbol of the registered data and a description of product data in the product specification is presented. And the product is serviced and utilized in the application. Next, please. Uh, let's take more detailed example of each steps I mentioned before. The concept register specific unique independent set of definition of a concept that may, may be used to describe the geographic, hydrographic, and metadata information. Those concepts 
as registered in the concept register may then be used within the data dictionary to develop data structure, the data model. This is the feature catalog. On the screen, you can see the example, what I mentioned, the reg. The reg, the terms and definition, is registered in the concept registry. Next, please. Next step is a data dictionary register. This register specify the independent set of definition of features, attributes, listed values, and information types. As an example, as I mentioned, reg, reg register in the data dictionary as a feature type. These feature types contain sub attributes. For, for one of the example is a category of regs. So those are the, the, the attributes also have the listed value on that. Next, please. The register of, 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 of attributed features as an abstract description of entity is only one element of all concept. As long as the human interaction with geo information is dominantly by visualization. The visual element to be associated with the various attributed the features are required. Therefore, second type of register has been implemented for different type of visualization. The basic three types are for point and line and symbols, all coming from patterns and colors. On the screen, that is an example of Rex. Rex has three different symbol on, on each category. Next, please. Once the data model and structure register in the data dictionary, and then and the rules and, and definition of symbol, symbols and colors register in the portrait or register, with these elements, the, we can create product specification which describe the data set. So these are the, 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 the list of the uh, example of S100 based product specification, which contained the data model, feature catalog, and rules for the portrayal with the feature, uh, portrayal catalog. Next, please. This is uh, what I mentioned so far is a step from beginning registering in the concept and then and then very last days to produce the catalog from the registry so the data dictionary and portrayal register provide the building blocks for the data modeling and those data named the data products can be specified by click and carry of data building blocks out of the registers this process is supported by Bespoken, Bespoke Catalog Builder, the tool accessed from the registry that export catalog in XML format, which is the machine readable. Machine can read any specific data model and rules of visualization is automatically understanding what is data and how could display on the screen. However, customized data product is shaped. It always be comparable, interoperable with other data product based on S100 framework. This capability will facilitate the Google map concept. So combine, superimpose, and amend geo information seamlessly in one solution. Next, please. The data dictionary, the portrayal register, are organized into the number of domains. You can see the list of domain. So those are aligned with the organization and related to the subject matter expert within overarching maritime domain. So the new domains can be added as required. It's not only the IHO, the system, it is for all the domain, which is related to the maritime and oceans. So we are invite any other the ocean science discipline to participate in this activity of the GI registry. 
Next, please. Uh, this is the list of S100 product specifications so far we have. So, so it's not only, as I mentioned, the IHO, the product specification, we also have the, the other uh, S100 based product specification for the International Association of Light Authority, Ayala S203, which is based on S100, and then Inland ENC Harmonization Group, which is for S100, S403, and then WMO, and then IEC, et cetera. Next, please. Uh, these, uh, these are the information and guideline and standard for the managing and managing of the in, uh, GI registry. So that, that we have the registry manager in our the secretariat, and also we have great support from, from one of our member states, the Republic of Korea. They are great support in terms of the technical uh, uh, development of the registry. And also international and technical input and oversight, oversight from the S100 working group and then IHO Hydrographic Service and Standard Committee, they are involved. Next, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jung. Uh, Julia, if you can join us, uh, I'm sure there's a couple of questions uh, that's specifically addressed to you. Um, just on the last presentation on the registry, um, the invitation is there. If there's any other uh, domains uh, that are interested uh, to contact us, um, ask for more information, um, and hopefully, if we have more domains registered, we will achieve uh, data compatibility uh, to allow us to make sure that we do have a to make the predicted ocean a reality. If you can just make it bigger, please. Let's start from question one. Okay, I think this is addressed to you, Julia. Does S104 and S111 allow for real-time input of permanent recording tide gauges and current meters for super scale real-time navigation approaches and related to unequal and overhead appearances. Yeah. yeah, so so currently no, um, but that's because real-time data has to be incorporated into S100 edition five. Um, and that's one of the big pieces of work that's happening right now. So edition five will have all the um, the guidance on how to do real time um, for both surface currents and um, water levels, but any other real time operations. Um, the, what, hap what we realized was that um, we needed to sort of have that framework of how to do real time in S100 and then allow each of the different product specifications then implement that same framework versus having each product specification implement, implement a real time aspect um, themselves, which would go against how we do standardization. So once that gets put into edition five, then the next subsequent editions of surface currents, S111 and S104, will also have that real-time information, which is part of their operational editions. And that's, I, that's one of the things I know our office is also keenly interested in, is how to do real-time, because we have our ports program, which has a lot of the sensors that comes out every six seconds. And so we want to be able to, you know, have that sensor data for real time, you know, as the ship transits uh, and picks up those sensors. So, so it's a, I guess it's a yes and no. It will be there, um, but post edition five. Thank you, Julia. Uh, I hope that that has answered the question. Then we also have a comment that moving from straight shipping routes to S triple one optimized dynamic routes has the potential to reduce carbon footprint of global shipping. And that, that is a fact. Thank you for that comment. And I saw another question uh, below. Are there other international organizations, IALA, IMO, WMO, leading the development of their own specific S100, S200, 400, or does the IHO play a role in it all? 
And that, that uh, question came from the previously presentation. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, these organizations are all domain owners and uh, they have the full responsibility for the development of uh, their own uh, specifications um, uh, as they do participate within the, the registry. Um, so it is fully compatible uh, with the S100 world. You want to add anything? Yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you. I just gonna add one more comment on that. So all information, I mean the product specification and the development who are published, all the information are registered in the product specification register in the registry. So it's not only IHO product specification in it. So IMO, WMO, and IEC, all their product also register in, in the registry. So you can see any any product specification or development on, on that. And I'd also like to add, we do a lot of liaisoning with the S100 working group. So um, the representatives who've been developing the S41X have participated at the working group level um, and also IALA and IEC. Um, you know, because I think if they, as they're developing product specifications and they have new requirements that have to go into S100, it comes through the working group. So, so there is a lot of liaisoning going on within the IHO between these other um, organizations um, for full interoperability. Thank you. Is that the list of all the questions? Yeah. Good. Uh, thank, thank you for your participation. And uh, we hope that you found the information uh, of interest and uh, that we're going to have uh, more uh, participants in uh, the S100 world. So the invitation is there, contact us. Um, please visit the IHO website where you can find all the contact details. Uh, if you need any further information, uh, we will assist you as best as we can. So thank you very much for your participation uh, and the questions and uh, thank you and goodbye.